Okay, guys, so now I want to cover some of the ways that you can kind of take um, a Google form and transform it um, from an assessment engine to more of a, like a, a class-based activity. Um, some ways that students have been, or teachers and students have been using this would be for like peer reviews. Um, but there's, and uh, like scavenger hunt style um, activities. So I'm going to show you kind of like the way that you could do it. Um, and I'm going to use this example for arguing um, argumentative topics and argumentative writing that uh, some of the fifth grade classes are, are jumping into right now. And then hopefully you can kind of take this concept and twist it into something awesome and see if you can come up with something um, different with Google Forms that you haven't done before. So what I've done here is I've started a form. It's just a new form. And I came and I gave it a title and um, and renamed my file. And I can have directions for students here. And then I just have one question, which is um, to select a topic. So students are either assigned or going to select a topic. And then within that topic, they're going to do some research and argue either uh, the for or the against side of that topic. So what I've done is created this question. It's a multiple choice question, and then I have my topics here. So in order to kind of create this jumping around form, at some point, wherever it is that you want them to have to jump, you have to have a multiple choice question. Right now, it's the only uh, question type that allows uh, students to jump through. One way that you could use this would be to have a problem and then answers and maybe you're fishing for uh, common common mistakes that students would make or common um, misleading answers and then based on the selection that students make it jumps them to either a question that breaks down that problem even more to kind of really troubleshoot what students are having trouble with or challenges them more if they got it right so you could kind of use this as like a prescriptive assessment tool as well which would be a really cool way of doing it, kind of creating that um, re remediation exam for it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop labbing. And so now I have my questions, here's my topics. I'm gonna make this question required. They're not able to move on without this question being required. And now we're gonna use this new um, tool down here. And I know I kind of showed it in the first video, but using this, creating a new section. So you're creating a new section and then you'll see this after section one um, continued to next section automatically comes up now because you can jump, right? You can jump to these places now within your form. So you can create a, like, if I did this, then I get to go here. If I did this, then I get to go here. Kind of like you see how this adventure is already starting, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to leave it the way that it is. Oh, look at that. There's, there I am, me. Um, and I'm going to move into my second section. So my second section is going to be each one of these topics. So section two is going to be uniforms in schools. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to keep pressing on here and I'm going to add a new section. So now I have a three, section three. And my section three is year-round school. And I'm going to create a new section. And in that section, I'm going to create homework, the homework debate. Now, any one of these sections, uh, you can merge them up if you change your mind, or you can um, you can move, right? Um, move sections around, or at any point, add a section in between um, to change them up. So I may or may not want to add more sections into here. So now, once I have this uniforms in school. So I can have some directions on what students are going to use. So you're going to use this section to research and I'm actually going to use this same description for each one of my sections. So I'm going to pop it in. And you, of course, can do whatever, obviously, you want to do for this. Okay, 
So now in uniforms in school, I have a group of kids and uh, some of the kids are gonna be arguing for uniforms and some of them are gonna be arguing against. So uh, I can either then have a question like, are you doing the yes side and the no side and then filter them into that area? Or I could just uh, use this as um, a question, yes or no. So, um, Um, and I can just do it as a yes or no question in here. Whoops, one too many. Or I could then use another prescription, right? So like another jump to another section. I kind of want students to be able to, I just want to see like the yes arguments and the no arguments and then have the same kind of um, questions within here. So um, within this question, I can, I can either have like a new title so I can have a title and a description. So that could be like research tools. I could also have um, just some new questions in here and do some like paragraph questions um, where I'm providing students with some resources. So I found some research and then areas where students could actually put in some of their research, right? So upload a file full of the research that you've used or uh, just pasting links into, into here based on your research that you've done. So, um, so I'm going to come back into here and I'm just going to pull up some of the things. So, um, so here's some of the research, right? Traditional versus year round schools. I just pulled up some articles and as you're working on these with students, they're kind of working on, on formulating their yeses and their noes to it. And then also coming up with counter arguments for each one, uh, which will be really great. So there's a, there's a bunch of different ways that you can uh, organize how you want students to go about this. And what I'm mostly focusing, focusing on is showing you the kind of how it works, but I'm gonna keep building this out. So the way that I want this to work is I'm gonna give students each one of these articles and I want them to come up with uh, three pros or three cons or three things that go along with whatever side that they're arguing. So. Um, I can either have like a title section or I can just do it all within within the question and using kind of the description of the question. OK, so I'm going to show you this like so read the. Okay, so here I want them to, to read an article. So I'm just gonna come up, I'm gonna pull one of these articles and I want them to come up with uh, three details for each one. Um, so I'm actually going to add a title in here and I'm gonna swap it up here and I'm actually gonna pull in. So here's the article. And I'm actually going to pull this. I want this kind of to pull as much info as possible where I can really organize what students have. OK, so um, so I'm going to label these read article one. Come up with three supporting details for your argument. OK, and so then I'm actually going to turn these questions into article one. Uh, support for claim. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to do it like this, support for claim. And then maybe I want to repeat this whole thing. So I've done this, read the first article and then come up with three supporting claims for that uh, or three supporting details for it. And then um, 
maybe I want to repeat that for each article. You could have done this just as one paragraph, you know, come up with three supports. I kind of wanted it to, because it's going into a spreadsheet, um, I wanted it to break out each one of them so I'd be able to see supporting uh, arguments for each one of their sides that they're arguing um, individually. So to do this again, I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to add a second section, right? And now you could create a new, like when you're done, you're going to move to the next area. You could kind of keep jumping them through so that they're only going one article at a time and this doesn't get huge. Um, so another, so you could add a, I could add a section in here and then really make this kind of like uniforms in school, here's article one, and then once they finish article one, they're going somewhere else, right? Continuing to the next section. And then they're going to do article two and then they're going to do article three. And that way, you know, if they're already jumping through, it's each one. Or I could just keep going and add, you know, article two. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Now, these links that I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing these links. When I'm pasting these links in, they don't look like, you know, a link. But when I preview this form, I just want to show you, there'll be a link. Oh, let me, uh, uniforms in school, next. And then I'm going to show you the, yeah, see how they're hyperlinked now. And so you see, like, this kind of breaks it up, right? The, by adding those titles, it really breaks up the form, and it's it's not like one big, long party happening there. Um, so... And then I'm going to continue the same thing. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to duplicate a question, and then I'm going to drag it beneath. So I'm going to change this to Article 2. Article 2. And then the same thing. Okay, and then I can continue. So I'm gonna, I have one more. I know you're like, Jackie, I get the idea. Um, but I'm gonna do one more, and I think it's just as fast for me to just start from scratch each time than it is to try to duplicate and drag. And so I'm just gonna grab my third article, and I'm gonna come back, and this is article three, and then again, I'm going to duplicate and then drag below and change this to Article 3 and then duplicate. Oops. Article 3. So I hope this is helping to give you some ideas as to ways that you could um, do you know use this kind of style and you're thinking wow this would be really great for blah 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 so i love it so now what's going to happen after they finish this they finish their section two right so they have supported their claim they've done all this research they've read three articles and they've come up with three details from each article that support whether or not they they are arguing for or against uniforms in school. So after they finish this, they're submitting the form. They're not going to the other sections right now. They're only, this group is only in charge of this. So I'm changing this after section two, they're submitting the form. Okay. And then I would do the same thing for year round school. So I would add um, some articles and do the same thing for year round school. So just for, just to show you, um, read an art, read the article and I'm gonna just leave it at this. And then again, after section three, they'd submit form, and then the same thing for this one. Um, and after this section, because it's the end, it doesn't matter, they're gonna get a submit anyway. So then what has to happen now is, is right now, when I select uniforms in school, I need to go to section two. When I select, select year-round school, I need to go to section three. I'm scrolling section three. And then the same for homework. So the way that you do that is when you click on your first question that you want to kind of drive your form, you click on the three dots and you, you select this, go to section based on answer. 
And so uniforms in school, I want to go to section two, uniforms in school. And you see how I went because I titled my section, it makes it really easy for me to identify which one I need to do. And so now I've created this. If I selected this answer, I go here. If I selected this answer, I go here. And the same idea would work for, you know, challenging kids with questions or taking them to the next, who's the protagonist? What is the problem? How are, how are they gonna come up with a solution? You know, walking through the story arc, uh, practicing math facts, driving in deeper. If you get this basic one right, maybe try multiplication. If you get this multiplication right, try division. If you understand this fraction, try a harder one. If you don't, dumping them back into easier questions. So, I mean, it would take a lot of work to build something like that out, but you can do it. Um, and those are just a couple of ideas on how you would utilize that. All right, so here's my where do you stand form. And now I'm going to preview, and I just want to show you how that's going to work. So if I come to this form, it's required. I need to set my form to actually grab my name. So we're going to come back and edit that real quick. But if I select uniforms in school and I hit next, it's taking me to my uniforms in school side. I say yes. I have a claim, uh, support. I'm just going to write the word support in here. And then here's my support. And I would make these required as well. And I don't have them required right now. But if you want students to actually do the work, make sure that you make them required. And this would be a great way for you to be able to compile all of the stuff. And then students can sit with that spreadsheet. And then, you know, when they're actually debating, be able to pull from that spreadsheet and then refine their argument based on what, you know, the opposing argument is saying and so forth. So it's a great way to use this. And then hit submit. So I'm skipping over everything else, right? So I skipped over homework. I skipped right over um, full year school. And all I did was my uniforms. Now I could have them go and do something else. I could give them a link to the spreadsheet where they can then sit there and kind of, you know, go through all of the argument and so forth. You've got all kinds of options. So if I come back to my form, um, and I'll, I'll just, let me just show you. If we select a different, so if I choose homework instead and I hit next, it's going to take me to the homework section. And then here's where I would have all the requirements for the homework section as well. So pretty cool. It's awesome. Love it. So that's the way that you would use, you know, kind of like this choose your own adventure style form. Um, and you could do it even with sections or different forms and using a QR code, right? So you get a link to the form. You could have QR codes. If you're arguing this, here's a QR code and a list of resources to help you kind of, and some questions to kind of help you guide, guide your inquiry through this form. Uh, it's super great. So again, and then up here in settings, you'd want to make sure that you collect their email address. Uh, maybe you only want one response. Maybe you want them to have to go through multiple times, so don't limit it then. And then you'd probably want to add a question in here um, for their name. And it can just be short answer, perfect. And then they make this one required as well. All right, so that is, you know, kind of the nuts and bolts of how you would create a form that kind of jumps you around. So it's jumping you through. And again, this one doesn't necessarily matter because this is driving where it goes. But each one of these, you want to make sure you come in and after you've done the section, you know, submit form. Or you could have another section at the end that then is having some kind of like a, you know, final argument page or whatever uh, you wanted to do and take it to another area uh, if you did that as well. So you could have it kind of jump right through all of these different things, all kinds of options. Um, so I hope this is helping to give you some ideas. I'm going to work on putting some templates into the template gallery and then I'm going to show you how you can pull some of those templates from the gallery.